What's going on, everyone? Uh, welcome back to, I guess it's Tide's Talk now, no longer Tide's Hot Stuff. I am joined by a not-so-happy Paul Stingo, uh, front office man of the Tides, but we know they're going to turn around their season. Paul, how you doing? All right, hanging in there. Hanging in Same there. Oh, yep. So, 0-3, worst start mm -hmm. since joining Mid-Island. Though those 0-3 losses, those, those three losses – were against the top three teams in the national, uh, the American League. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we've been, we've been put to the test very early on in the schedule. Um, in in recent years too, we've had very similar starts. I know that we've been matched up against the Heat and Brothers in specific seasons before, at least mm -hmm. on opening day. And then uh, we've had some tough starts. But you know, we, in the past, we've at least come out like one and two, two and one. And I mean, right. even zero and three, it's really not like you know we don't really need to have a crazy sense of urgency, but. Um, you know, it's a little a little troubling to start the year. Oh, for sure. And I mean, I'm, uh, gave me some of your stats. Two runs is just unlike the Tides. Two runs yeah. in the past three yeah. games uh, is unlike the Tides. Though, mm -hmm. while that might be a little bit of a damper, your pitching has been incredible. I, I looked at uh, last yeah. night, and I think you either have the second or now first might be with the brothers' loss uh, runs allowed. Yeah. So you guys yeah. are least amount of runs allowed. So yeah. Um, the, the pitching has been good, and we, we expected the pitching to be good. You know, we obviously yeah. expected the hitting to be a lot better. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've had some great, great performances so far to come out throughout the year. Um, Stumpo obviously did his thing. He's, again, right. now battling a blister, blister problem. Um, yeah, so he's been inactive since opening day. Um, I think he was expected to start one of the two games that we've had since then. I think it was the third game because I don't think we were going to start him back-to-back. Gotcha. But um, yeah, he's he's scratched. He's still that that blister problem is something that's been ailing him for the past uh, at least two years now. I as far as I know. Now, um, now, how long do you think he will be out for? The way he the way he handles his blister problems, I mean, they it varies. So I mean, I okay. don't really have a timetable. I mean, I haven't spoken to him since um the last game he was at, which was the second game of the year. Um, and he seemed like he was, I mean, if I had to put an estimate, I would say about a week away. So we're looking at about right around now. Okay. Um, being able to return, but, uh, he won't be making the start tomorrow. Um, I don't even know if he's actually going to be there tomorrow, but he won't, he won't be used tomorrow. We have, uh, the doubleheader on Sunday, as I'm sure we're going to speak about at right. some point, but, um, he's going to probably be pitching one of those games if, if, if healthy. So. Perfect. So tomorrow, which will be when this gets released, mm -hmm. um, he will not be at that game and, and not starting. Yeah, he may he may show up, but as far as our our pitching plan, he's not in the pitching plans as of now. So, um, you know, you know, you never know. Maybe somebody, you know, God forbid, gets a, is a scratch before a game or he right. shows up and he's healthy. But uh, you know, as of right now, I would say he's not going to be a part of the game plan for tomorrow. So, gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, now I have to ask any other injury issues that you guys are dealing with. I know Andrew. Stella was coming back from a huge, uh, a pretty big injury um, yeah. and, and rehabbing going into this season. And any other injuries? Um, other than that, I mean, like I said, besides the fact that we've only scored two runs in the first three games, everything else has gone great. We've had okay. fairly good attendance the first few games of the year. We've had, um, you know, everyone pretty much like we're we're load managing our pitchers early in the season. I know that's a basketball term, but we're really <laughs> trying to like, you know, we're really trying to like ease guys into it. We're not trying to overwork anybody. Gotcha. Um, but injury wise, no, I mean, Stumpo with the blister, Stella has looked phenomenal on both sides of the ball. I mean, his average isn't like through the roof, but he's gotten some hits. He knocked in the only two runs of the season for us. Fantastic. Um, his, his defense, I think he's made one error and it was a pretty tough play in the last inning of our last game. But I mean, other than that, I mean, he's he's been sparkling. You know, he's he's a leader on the field, off the oh, field. Great guy. And, um, yeah, he's just yeah, he's a perfect guy to have on a baseball team, and his talent really, you know, um, goes along with that. So yeah. So that's good news. I, I think you guys are obviously just in a little bit of a slump. It's 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 first three games back after uh, a COVID kind of pandemic situation mm -hmm. where guys might not have been able to work out the way that they wanted to. Right. So. Obviously, I think that that goes without saying. But one of your losses was actually to a, a team that, yeah, and you know, I love you guys, but but Jerry kind of talked crap about this team, and yeah. uh, you know, he might he might have put his foot in his mouth a little bit. Yeah, 
um, as you guys lost to the Heat, who who are mm-hmm. playing hot, no pun intended. Mm-hmm. I mean, my listen, my only comments on that game was, listen, it was a great, great battle between the two teams. And, you know, I, you hate to lose by one run, but it wasn't like we went out there and lost 15 nothing, and we got the shit kicked out of us. It was a right, pretty right. even matchup. They walked it off in the last inning. I mean, you know, it could have gone either way. Right. You know, they, they outlasted us. You know, they played a great game. I respect the talent they have on that side. Right. Um, you know, some, some uh, you know, exchanges were – at the end of the game went on and then there was the little uh, Instagram beef that went on, you know, the, the following day, but you know, listen, uh, over that makes here, it interesting. Yeah. I mean, listen over here, Jerry, you know, as and I mean, you speak a lot. Yes. You know, Jerry's a very big troll. So I mean, people in the league and right. you know, maybe some of them catch on, but you know, the whole like bad Red Sox thing. I mean, I'm not saying that he was completely joking, but he's a little <laughs> bit of an antagonist, he's an antagonistic person, Jerry. So he's and, you know, and that's why we love and him. And it worked. And it worked. They got under their skin a little bit and you know, they got fired up and they right. beat us. Yes. So you know, whatever, whatever whatever it is, it is. But um listen, they're a good team and uh mm-hmm. You know, we, we like playing against them. Um, you know, it's not always uh, as smooth sailing. Sometimes we, we you know, we, we butt heads a little bit, both sides. Right. But um, at the end of the day, listen, we go out there, we play baseball. The game's over. Whoever wins, wins. And that's how we're going to be going about it the rest of the year against them. Right. And that's what keeps it competitive, too. Uh, you know, for those who haven't seen, uh, Mid-Island Mania Episode 1 is up on our YouTube. Um, that's something that I talked about with Brian is th- that the competitiveness of the league really helps – um, you know, link, uh, links in people's careers at a competitive level. Right. Yeah. Which is fancy. You know, yeah. Really nice. So I know you guys are in a little bit of a slump. Are you guys adding any players to maybe help alleviate some, some of uh, your fielders issues or, or some hitting issues? Um, we, we added uh, two pitchers um, in the last, uh, probably like last week or so, I would say. Um, that's not really going to help much with our hitting yeah. situation, but um, we added a pitcher who actually started our second game against uh, Brothers Pastry. Um, his name is Timothy Lopez. He was, you know, his first start as a Tide. He, he we got him onto the team from um, Jonathan Pinheiro, mm-hmm. um, college pitcher. He's currently in college. Um, he was he was. Sorry. So um, he looked pretty good. I mean, you know, he wasn't overwhelming, but for his first start with the team and, you know, he's going to be with us the entire summer. Right. Um, and we're very happy to have him. And then another guy that we've been having talks with on and off all winter. I didn't really mention him in the hot stoves, but it was one of those like under the, you know, under the cover kind of thing. thing. Um, a friend of uh, Justin Padone, another friend of Justin Padone, who came down to uh, Tide's practice last spring training okay uh, pitched against us last summer for another team in our league um and now he's he's kind of like in and out of new york so he has some like downtime that he could stay here so he's actually going to be our starting pitcher for tomorrow night awesome Uh, his name is uh james garth hafner Uh, okay yeah he he's in his uh he's i i believe he's in his second year of college he's at ramapo um so i guess he's around 20 21 years old um he went in high school. He pitched for Fort Hamilton. He led uh, the New York City PSAL in strikeouts. So he was—he's a hard thrower. That's a good addition. Yeah. So um, I mean, listen, he's probably not going to make more than two, three starts for us. But you know, just to have somebody of that caliber come down and you know help out our pitching staff and hopefully, you know, keep keep the uh, the good pitching going at least. So you know, that's awesome. And especially with uh, Stumpo with his blisters, that's always good to have an additional person. Um, now I got to ask, uh, who, who's going to, who do you think is going to turn it around the fastest when it comes to hitting, um, you know, someone who might be in a slump, but you know, he won't stay in a slump for long. I'm, I'm trying to think, uh, listen, um, as of right now, if I was to highlight four hitters that, that mm-hmm. have been off for like decent starts, I mean, in comparison to the rest of the team, um, they would, it would probably be Jordan Stark, uh, Stella, Robbie and, uh, Luis, our shortstop. Okay. Uh, have probably been off to the best starts offensively out of everybody on the team. Now, I, I think that how they're hitting right now is probably not even as good as they could be. But like I said, in comparison to what th- we're doing as a whole, they've, they've probably been doing the best. Um, Justin Stark is off to a pretty slow start. I believe he has one hit in his first about nine, ten at-bats. 
Um, he's a he's a guy that once he gets going, there's almost either no getting him out or no preventing him from hitting a ball 400 right. feet. You know, right. so he's one guy I think could get going. But like I said, and we've spoken throughout the winter, me right. and you, and I've been on. I think that this whole team, anybody in the lineup, um, you know, I think everybody's going to end up doing well, you know, by the end of the season. So, I mean, if I had to pinpoint one guy that I'm like, oh, well, I think he should be off to a better start, I would say Justin Starr. Okay. Uh, but again, I think everybody's going to be okay. Everyone's going to find their groove. It's it's about seeing pitching and right. we didn't really face, we didn't really face uh, pitching in the winter, you know, in the spring training, I'm sorry. And um, it's just very hard to adjust and like, right. you know, as you were talking to Brian and, you know, obviously you've spoken to and you've seen other teams in the league. Right. These guys are coming out throwing, you know, 85 plus with wicked off-speed pitches. Mm -hmm. It's not easy when you don't see a pitch all winter. So, right. or sprint, you know, so, you know, every, everyone's slowly getting acclimated. I guess we're a little bit behind the eight ball on that, but, you know, all in, Plenty of all time. in time. Yeah, all in due time. So, yeah. All right, so you get three games coming up. We'll, we'll talk about the first one versus the Gators. Gators, I believe, are one and one or two and one. Yeah, they're they're one and one as far right. as I, I recall. Yeah. Uh, so good team. Uh, what is? I don't want to get you to give. What's the game plan going into this? Uh, I mean, listen, we we have a good track record against the Gators. I don't have like an exact stat line on it, mm -hmm. but you have to look at it in this way: the Gators have vastly improved in the off season. Mm -hmm. Um, they've added a bunch of bats. They got our catcher, Chris Romano. Um, they added, um, I'm pretty sure they added a few arms as well. So it's not, we're not going to be seeing the same Gators team. They even right. have new, they even have new uniforms. So we may not even associate them as being the Gators. So, uh, you know, we'll go, listen, we got to go out and play our game. You know, we have to grind for seven innings. Right. Um, we know our pitching is going to be there. We got James going tomorrow. He's an absolute horse on the mound. Um, we have uh, Russell, who um, made his first appearance against the Heat last week, was very solid. Yep. I think two, two innings of one, one run ball out of relief. And then we got our closer, Tony Rivera, behind him. So that's how we're lining up the pitching. And then, like I said, it's just a matter of, you know, taking good at bat, situational hitting, um, you know, moving runners over. And, you know, we got, we got to, something's got to click. I mean, you right. know, there, there are teams, I mean, I've even been watching a lot of uh, MLB lately. There are teams winning games two to one. Right. You know, pitching's been so ahead of the hitting, but you got to find a way to win. You know, you, you could also in you the know. same sense, like you rather your pitching start off like have that hot and and not have to like warm up because right yeah and have your hitting have to warm up as opposed to your pitching because right right yeah so that's the yeah. good news. Um, mm -hmm. what's the I haven't even asked what's the batting order looking like? Um, so. I, I I believe we've had a few different batting orders due to the mm -hmm. fact of people not showing up. And then I think game two or game three, Jerry just wanted to shake everything up. But uh, Understandably. Yeah. For, we already kind of have an idea of what our lineup is going to be tomorrow. I spoke to Jerry earlier in the day. Um, I believe we're going to be leading off JP. Um, I think Robbie's going to be batting second. Uh, Luis third. Um, Stella's going to be batting fourth and then the Stark brothers, uh, Justin and Jordan. Five and six. Um, yeah, five and six. And then I think it was a combination. I think it was Dave or Uxie and then Dave. And then, um, the back two was going to be Matt Oliva, who will be making his season debut. And then, okay. I don't know exactly which order that was in, but that's the 10 position players that we're going to be rolling with tomorrow. Um, I don't know exactly where everybody's going to be playing. But um, we hope that, that that, you know, construction of lineup at least does something. That's a solid um, lineup. That sounds like a good no, it's a lineup. very – yeah, and listen, every game we've had this year, the first three games on paper, we look like we're about to score 10 runs a game. And then it's, right. you know, strike out after – I mean, I, I was doing – putting in the, the stats and stuff like that, and it's just, you know – it was tough. It was like I'm I'm writing in K K K. You know, which is something. It's funny that we because it was something that we actually talked about that that needed improvement this year mm -hmm. was the yeah. amount of strikeout. So it's you know, yeah. so it's I, a, it, I, yeah. I just I just think that the strikeouts are just again like a lack of seeing pitching. I right. think that you know we are prone to the strikeout. I'm not going to say we're not, but I think that um, once the guys turn it around. You know, as you saw in the balance last year, right. we had a team batting average of like 280, 290, and we led the league in home runs. So, you know what? If our outs come on strikeouts, so it's be fine. it. It's fine. Yeah. You know, but we have to get to that point. For sure. 
we can't be, you know, get one one hit every three innings and strike out the rest. Yeah, that's that's not going to work. It's acceptable. It's, yeah, it's just not going to happen. Especially with the com- competition, especially, I mean, the National League is competitive as well, but especially with that 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 American League, it's it's yeah, a tough it's, it's a tough division. So you, yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so then you have a doubleheader on Sunday versus the Wolfpack mm-hmm. and the Bulldogs. What's the game plan? Uh, who will be pitching? What's your rotation looking like for the Wolfpack? Or you're not 100 percent sure yet. We, we don't know who's going to be pitching what games. Okay. Um, we're hoping that again. We're hoping that Stumpo's finger is um, somewhat healed right. up. I know. I know that Fonzie's definitely going to be in the mix and maybe at least one, if not both of those games out of the bullpen, maybe starting one and not pitching the other. Um, we have uh, Timothy Lopez, who made a start in the second game. He's definitely going to be getting work. Um, we're hoping Tony could be there. You know, we need a lot of pitchers for two games. You know, right. we need at least right. – you're looking at at least four or five, if not more, for yeah. both games. So um, we don't really – we don't have a starter name for either game. Um if I had to, if I had to pick right now, I would probably lean towards throwing uh, Timothy against um, the Wolfpack just because he hasn't, they haven't seen him before. Right. But you know, that's just that's just my uh, weird uh, mystique way of thinking. So. Uh, right, and you're you're playing a Wolfpack team that's hot. They're uh, yeah, they're red they're hot. hot. Yeah, they're yeah. red. And and you know, good for them because they had a very they had a very rough fall. So. so uh, right. You know, I'm happy for them. I mean, listen, every time we play them, I want to beat them, but um, you know. That's Whatever with every team, about. though. Yeah, yeah, obviously. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm very I'm happy that they made a turnaround and they seem to be getting on the right track because right. when they're right, when they're right, let me tell you, we, you know, we've spoken, obviously we've spoken before about the top echelon teams. They're right up right. there. Oh, for sure. So, um, you know, they've been in championship games before. They've been in semifinals. So, you know, Sal gets that team right. You know, there is, they're, they're, you know, they're as good as anybody on every, any given day. So, for sure. All right, and then you're playing the Bulldogs, who, like yourselves, are, are looking for their first win. Uh, I'm sure mm-hmm. you, you know, things could change by that game, and I'm sure they will. But um, they're also looking for their first win. What's the game plan going into the Bulldogs? Um, I mean, we know some of the guys on that team because some of them played on the uh, Bre- Brewers, la- the Brewers last year. Okay. Um, we're familiar with some of them. Um, a, a bunch of other guys. I actually was with two of the guys on the Bulldogs last night. We were at a softball game. We play on the same team. Um, but, uh, you know, again, like I said, we go out, we play our game. And, you know, the bottom line after, you know, everything we've been talking about is we have to get the bats going. I mean, that's the yeah. bottom line. We get the bats going. We put up four or five runs a game. With our pitching, it's going to be good. hard to do that right. most of the time. So, you know, there are exceptions, but we'll see. For sure. All right, that brings me up to uh, – we talked about a little bit of the pitching rotation. We've talked about uh, – what about you and you and Jerry's uh, bragging rights with, with fantasy? How's that going? Um, so, I actually – so, what I was planning on doing was, like, doing, like, tabulating stats after every four games. I, I don't right. know exactly how many games this season is going to be, but – I just figured four would be a good be- benchmark. Um, we haven't really had many – again, we haven't had many statistics to really go by because right. we haven't done much offensively. Um, but uh, as far as, like, you know, the main categories, are my, my team batting average is at 257. Um, and my team ERA is at 350, and I have two stolen bases. And then Jerry has uh, a 222 batting average with a 233 ERA and zero okay. stolen bases. So – you know, it's it's, it's that, close. Yeah, and then I have the edge on RBIs because Stella drove in the only two runs of the season. Gotcha. Um, but, you know, it, it's very early on in the year. Right. Um, but, but yeah, like I said, you know, it's been pretty evenly balanced. And uh, we got a few new guys on the team, so there's been pickups made. Um, you know, so we are adding to the rosters a little right. bit. So uh, we're, I'm factoring in those stats as well. What? So, yeah. so that's great. So – Upcoming games, we, we talked a little bit about your game plan, but but what's the main focus right now for these games? Like, what are you and Jerry telling the guys? There's been, as much as we've been struggling offensively, um, mm-hmm. there's been just a very, like, positive vibe coming from especially Jerry, you know, right. even really myself to a certain extent, because it, it's one of those things where it's like, we know we're going to get going. It's just a matter of time. Right. Um, Jerry's remained very positive, even in like our post game meetings when we're like, you know, we huddle up after the game, you know, Jerry says like, you know, good game. We played good defensively. We got to get the bats going, but 
you know, we know it'll turn around. And that's pretty much the message we've been sending throughout the team over the course of the past two weeks. So gotcha. um, we're just, we're just trying to stay within our game. We don't want to press and we don't want to make guys feel like, you know, they started the season 0 for 8, like, the, the, you know, the world's crashing down because right. 0 for 8 is such a small sample size, you know? Exactly. So outside of, you know, I, like I said before, there's about three, four guys that have been, you know, doing pretty well. The other guys, they'll come around, you know, sure. some guys who haven't even made their season debut yet. Like Matt Oliva is going to be showing up tomorrow night. We expect a good, um, you know, he's got a good lefty power back coming, right. coming for us. So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe adding a guy like that into the lineup will put a spark into the lineup. So now, now for Tides fans who, who uh, don't know of Matt, can you, can you give us a little background on him? Uh, yeah, so he joined the team in um, the fall uh, mm -hmm. of 2020. Um, he was actually brought to the team by Christian Santo. Okay. And, um, yeah. Uh, is it, and his cousin is actually a friend of mine we went to Zavarian with. And uh, he's a college ball player, um, pitcher and first baseman. He's a lefty, lefty hitter, lefty thrower. Um, he's, he, you know, like I said, he's an 18-year-old kid. He's a little bit unpolished, but he's got the raw talent. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just waiting for that to kind of, you know, fall into place. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So, all right, one last question for you, and then I'll let you go and, and get your game plan what, ready for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, what should we expect from the Tides ongoing, like, from this point on in the season? I, I mean, I would say wins, honestly. Okay. Because, yeah, because it, it, it's, it's been really rough, and – 0-3 start, we, we don't get off to starts like that, this team. Right. So it's just right. one of those things where, you know, we're, we're going to get, we're going to compile wins. I know, I know that at some point in the season, we're going to go on like a six, seven game winning streak. Right. Um, you know, we're going to be firing on all cylinders. I'm not saying it's going to happen starting tomorrow, but it's going to, it's going to happen. So gotcha. we're just, we're just waiting on it. We're excited. We're not down on ourselves and we're just looking forward to, you know, improving and getting the team back on back on ship you know awesome and paul best of luck for you guys tomorrow i'll be rooting for you, you kind of because i'm trying to also stay <laughs> unbiased but obviously you guys are my guys and um i will be rooting for you and i, and I hope that you guys have uh get your first win tomorrow thank you i appreciate it dear i'll speak to you soon have a yes good one. for sure bye paul all right bye and that was Paul Stingo of the Brooklyn Tides. If you guys are Mid-Island fans, maybe not Tides fans, but if you are Mid-Island fans, check out uh, our first episode of Mid-Island Mania. It's gonna, it's a great episode, and uh, Tides are for sure going to get their first win uh, this weekend. Uh, I don't know against two. Uh, they could go 3-0, and but they're going to get their first win. they got a lot of passion. Paul's a great guy. Jerry's a great guy, and uh, the bats are going to uh, wake up, I, I have a feeling. So uh, – that's it for us. That's Tides Thursday because this will be released on Thursday where the, when they will be playing a game. But uh, so stay tuned for more Tides action and more Mid-Island League action.